Good morning everyone, I am Shahani Anka and this is Group 2 and will be your presenter for today. So now our topic is on the philosophy of religion which is Confucianism. Firstly, let's talk about the origins and growth of Confucianism which will be discussed by Erika Fresh Tagaan. Origins and Growth of Confucianism Confucianism has brought social and political changes in the world. The founder himself, Master Kong or Kong Fuzi, was born during the troubled times of war, political intrigues, and many social changes in China. One must understand his life and teachings in the light of the political and social background that prevailed during his lifetime. Master Kong C. 551 to 479 BCE, who is more popularly known outside China by Latinized name Confucius, would be seen as the most influential th thinker in Chinese history. His teachings were all about moral and political ma maxims, a way of life, or traditional system of values. After the death of Confucius, his students and the many generations of the followers generated texts and compiled his different teachings. One of the collections of his sayings and teachings is the Analex, or Lonio. This collection has been primary source of the direct quotations of Confucius. Throughout the Chinese dynasties, Confucianism made a great impact in the political, social, economic, religious, and cultural aspects of many people's lives. It has adapted in itself to pol political and social demands while gaining positive influence and on some occasions experiencing breakdown, those becoming flexible. During the Han Dynasty, 206 BCE to 8 CE, Confucianism was promoted as a state ideology in which Confucian scholar official laid the basis of government. However, this must not this must not be seen as a case wherein Confucianism was used as a government tool. Confucianism here simply became a political watchdog for ruling activities in order to shape or reshape the political map. Confucianism has undergone hundreds of years of reforms in order to become what it is now. In early times, Confucius and his followers started a philosophy in path of peace and harmony amidst political and social changes during those times. The there were also periods when Confucianism suffered persecutions from dynasties and it needed to adapt to the current needs of the empire. Moreover, Buddhism and Taoism called the foundations of Confucianism as they created a new form of Confucian learning which led to reformulation of the Confucian view of the universe society and the self. These changes resulted in a new Confucian learning called Dao Su, the learning of the way, or Li Su, the learning of the principle or reason. Remember Dao Su, the learning of the way, Li Su, the learning of principle, reason, which became known in the West as Neo-Confucianism. As time passed, Confucianism is characterized as a process of tradition. This is a time when Chinese Confucianism was introduced to other East Asian countries and was presented accordingly to the local culture, beliefs, religions, and traditions. The Confucian classics and commentaries were interpreted in the light of their own local understanding, historical experiences, and practices. Filial Piti 
Purpose the respect and the guardians according to parents, which also extended to teachers and elder. Jesus would always say that one should not disobey. Dutifulness or loyalty. A person's first duty is the respect and service he or she gives to her parent or her parents starts in the family. Dutifulness starts in the family. Dutifulness, according to Confucius, was the antidote of the society's lack of discipline and proper behavior. Honesty and sincerity. According to Confucius, honesty and sincerity are the important are important in the proper development of one's inner self. Rightness and knowledge. Right is, rightness is knowing what is proper, right, and moral based on one's status and role as, as well as the species of the situation he or she is faced with. Rightness and knowledge. Confucius said, number one, people who are born with knowledge are highest level. Number two, those who attain knowledge, those who attain knowledge by studying. Number three, people who continue to study even though they find it difficult. Number four, those who find study even difficult and do not even try to learn. Courage. During the time of political disputes, many civil servants and government would just act blindly even if the ruler's actions are not morally right and not for the good of all. Confucius said, see what is right but do not do it. This shows lack of courage. Understanding, sympathy, compassion. Understanding, sympathy, compassion or show means not doing to others what one does not want to oneself. This message is simple. Treat others in the same way you want them to treat you. Humanity. Confucius helped us understand the different virtues, but for him, all of these virtues are the ways toward moral. Ren or originally means handsome, manly or romances man. This just means that all these virtues lead an, an individual into his or her being for humanity. Ritual. Rituals are distinct and unique to human society and are based on new societies, beliefs, traditions, and religions. It is divided into two religious rituals and novel etiquette. The two divided ritual, novel etiquette. Example include how a lord enters a room before a duke, the proper salutation from one round to another and the like. Religious rituals give importance to rituals because they show the reverence of a descendant to his ancestors, the reverence and dutifulness of a follower to a king. The book of poetry revealed that there are many rituals particularly ancestor venerations, which include the laying pot grains and wine, the invitations to the ancestors and the impersonation of the deaths. The gentleman. Gentleman, a person who possess all their virtues and can practice his humanity and rituals. For Confucius, a gentleman is the perfect person to lead a government since he thinks not for himself but for the common good. The concept of gentleman. The term gentleman is a noble origin. It is given to a young son of a lord and is required by birth, not by, by merit. However, Confucius redefined gentleman as a goal that everyone should aspire to be. Confu Confucian teachings See a gentleman as someone who possesses more moral uprightness, ritual, training, and good education, and ex exemplar moral behavior. Being a gentleman, according to Confucius, is not a birth, is not a birthright, but is a is a character that can be achieved through training, education, and living a moral life. Essentially, a gentleman has moral uprightness as he is guided by virtues and has a sense of responsibility as he helps other, others in need. He does not simply follow what the ruler commands but corrects a corrects or questions the, the command if needed. He is a noble and excellent but not arrogant and is willing to sacrifice himself for others. In short, a gentleman 
is a selfless and focus or or other as he also works in overcoming his selfishness or self-centeredness. A gentleman does not need affirmation or recognition from uh, from others to decide to act as a gentleman. He abandons material concerns instead to strive to obtain virtues necessary in becoming a gentleman. He re readily accepts accepts to re the rigors of learning and training to be a uh, selfless and to be focused on others. A gentleman gains wealth and achievement in accord with et et ethical norms. The true gentleman upon re realizing that he gained <coughs> wealth and fame unethically will decide to give up. As mentioned above, the household under the governance of the parents provides the, the child training and character building lessons. But these are not enough for the child to develop the character of a gentleman. The child has to go out and self and seek the worthy teacher who will edu educate him and him about gentlemanness, Mor moral behavior and ritual. The goal of education is for is for the student to be capable of cultivating himself to become respectful and to keep of to be a keeper of peace. In other words, education aims not to gain credit and stars from educational accreditors or to become one of the top 10 schools in the world. Rather, rather the Confucian worldview reminds that educational uh, education should primarily help students to develop their humanity and learn how to deal with any situation as they are actively engaged and em immersed in the world. A gentleman should, al should also be a master of himself. Self-mastery comes only after one has done with what is best for the self. Acquiring virtues, one has, th has to continuously evaluate or assess the self and check whether the virtues and action he exhibit are still according with the moral moral behavior that is expected from him. Confucianism shows that problems are not purely product of external forces in constant tension. This means that if there is a problem, one has to first look within oneself internally and see if the fault is one is in one is 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 one self a gentleman has two noble tasks to serve the governor government to become a moral advisor and educator to the ruler and to teach the young of the same noble character as a moral advisor. The gentleman has to ensure that the rulers practice moral conduct. Primarily, he keeps peace and is an, is an agent in making the world a better place. However, not all persons possessing gentleman gentlemanes get government position. In this case Confucius suggests that they may pursue another task to become characters of the young, teaching them to become gentlemen as well. One thing is is sure in Confucian 
teaching gentleness gentlemanness is a lifelong process of self cultivation and self mastery that is forming virtues necessary for an active participation in world affairs is human nature good or evil human nature translated as sing also king in chinese the chinese word sing means mind or heart and life the concept is quite similar to the hebrew notion of live which means the set of reason emotions for confucian scholars the goodness of human nature is only given as a gift from heaven but also something to be worked hard for Mencius 372-289 one of the greatest confucian scholars believe that all human beings are given the sense of right and wrong which makes the different from beasts also he teaches us that all human beings are equal despite the hierarchical structures present in society Mencius believe that human nature inherently good it only becomes evil because of conventional or physical norms. Fourth, more Minchus believe that human possibility is possible if, if human will nurture and cultivate the inner virtues through training and education. Not all Confucian scholars agree with Minchus' views. Sun Z 310 to 20. For instance, believe that man is evil. Human nature is evil. Human beings for him are selfish and foodness for profit. In order for man to be good, one of the most transformed by technique of teaching of goodness comes to conscious, conscious effort or activity. Mencius view of human nature. Mencius believe that everyone can become a sage. Human nature or man is good because sing is a gift from heaven. The heart of human beings is the heart that comes from heaven. Being a sage requires a good heart and cultivating virtues given that everyone is by nature good. Each one of us in innate goodness to be further nurtured and cultivated. Sun Zi, on the other hand, emphasized that human by na nature are weak. This leads to confessional division, one school emphasizing original wickedness, while another emphasizing original goodness. Between these two opposing views in human nature, Mencius' views become more popular and more well accepted by many Chinese believe, believers in the 2012 century. It is believed that Mencius' truth is exactly a copy of, of, of conscious unfortunately, unlike Confucius, Mencius had defend position and teachings of Confucius against his opponents, Confucius had long been gone before issues about morality and rituals become cr crucial of, for Chinese people. First, Mencius had spanned a moral obligation to defend the teaching of his school against rabid corrosion from opponent among the question that Mencius had responded were about the particular value of rights and music, morality in relation to success, the ideas of goodness, selfishness, and the sense of right and wrong. While Mencius views the human nature is good, it does not mean that disregards or denies the tendency of human beings to commit evil. On the contrary, he organized the fact that human beings are capable of be becoming evil. However, under met the tendency is the true and original character of human beings that is being good. To prove the, to prove the cl claim Mencius used to metaphor of the four sprouts or beginning of human nature, namely compulsion, compulsion shame, shame, dislike, modesty, and sense of right and wrong. Mencius explained that these sprouts, sprouts are inborn human beings of them since birth. They are just waiting for cultivated ones. There as a cultivated, they will develop in moral qualities. Compassion, for instance, is the feeling of understanding, sympathy toward others. If quality is nature, it will grow into virtue of empty. A putting oneself at others shoes, the feeling of shame arises when one one knows how to acknowledge his or her improper action, developing the same of shame leads the person to do what right and proper. If a sense of rightness and wrongness is valued wisdom, is developed in person, these sprouts, according to Mencius, are the beginning of, of goodness. After all, Mencius does not deny the tendency of human beings to do evil fate. 
It does not follow the human beings are bad simply because they are action to that theory cannot do it. It's only self-interested. It makes person think and act. The Confucius wisdom that mentions that wants to emphasize is that moral goodness and behavior are internal being moral. Behaving in according with the sports or inner virtues is natural. This moral behavior makes human beings distract from, distract from animals more than harvesting physical abilities and skills. Are the inner qualities and virtues the most be natured so that one uh, the one can attain the moral greatness is shown by the sheets. Cultivation of inner qualities and virtues requires gentlemanness. Gentlemanness, it is the gentlemanness of person that allows him focus his mind, heart. Sin is cultivating the inner quality, qualities and virtues. The Calf of Ancestor Another important of cultic practice championed by Confucianism is ancestor worship, which represents the belief of the other world. Or, or hereafter, a human being is composed of two souls, the upper or intellectual soul called hunt, and the lower or animal soul called bo or po. Each of these souls has transformative character. The upper soul or hunt becomes the spirit of Shin, while the lower or animal soul becomes the ghost or quay. These transformative character have respective destination such that the upper soul accents ascent to the world above while the lower soul goes with the animals with the body rather to the grave. Ancestral worship having been practiced and having emerged years before Confucianism remains strong and steady as a tradition do to Confucianism strong emphasize of it. The ancestral call is expressed in form of memorial service. Chinese people observe and perform such service either in temples, as an ancestral grave, or at their homes provide, provided that tables with the, with the names of the ancestor archive. The memorial service is composed of offering wine and food, levitation and silent, per, um, silent prostration in, prof, in front of table, the family members then have to partake in the prepare in a prepare meal to the end of celebration. Today, many people who consider themselves Confucians live in Asia, particularly in East Asia. Most adherents of Confucianism residing in Europe, North and South America, and other continents are usually of Asian descent approximately there are at least six million people who consider themselves Confucians. There are no clear indication of the serious revival of Confucianism today. <coughs> there is no conscious effort among the Chinese people to design a program that will connect or <coughs> or relate Confucianism to temporary life. However, there are three kinds of people who try to attempt to revive Confucianism without any clear goals for its purpose. Intellectual who raised the Confucian scholarship into a more metaphysical and philosophical discourse, religious, religious groups trying to build Confucianism as word religion and ordinary people are continually uphold Confucian values and moral codes in their daily life. Rituals in Chinese in general are expression of religious life and belief. They are communal and they build a shared understanding among members of community of believers. 
Ritual, rituals are closely associated to prayer or meditation. However, the Chinese world is etymo etymologically related to a more general religious practice. Worship and sacrificial vessel. These are the definite, re defined, the definite religious overtones of the Chinese. It, I li However, the Lin transcendence the Sakkar Sapa in the, in the sense that it includes the profound Sapa of human activities. That is, as a broadcast, broad, broader meaning that includes not just a religious practice, but a social practices as well for and plans, there are rituals in the training of cultivating virtues, social etymology, and property. Confucian teachers are also called teachers of rituals. In fact, Confucianism is known as ritual religion. Confucianism emphasizes the importance of ritual as what defines the form of proper, proper behavior. It revives the importance of cultic practice such as veneration of ancestor and worship of heaven. These rituals are inscribed in various books. Veneration of ancestor worship of heaven the confinacy various books of confinacy such as the spring autumn annals which elaborates the metaphysics of yin yang and the book of rites which contains elaborate instruction of proper conduction during month morning and funerals ritual property will have no effect without the right inner disposition it is hypo hyporesic for one to perform and observe proper ritual behavior in a particular occasion but lack inner conviction of doing for for intent so it is considered hyp hypocrisy for one to perform sacrifice for the dead but no concession con confiscation recognition of the presence of the spirit rituals are also reinforce the virtue of humanity it is expression of showing composition and concern say for example for the dead ancestor one of the most popular teaching of confession confession tradition in is the heaven the heaven plays an important role in confession rituals Chinese emperor are the sole privileged meditator between earth and, hev and the heaven. It is true the emperors that early favor and meditation of people of Chinese are lifted to heaven. In this sense, the emperors play an essential, an essential, essential role in confession, confession worship. A pleasant day to all. I am Samantha Faith O. Aglang and I am going to report what is a good society. Confucius dreamt of a peaceful and good society ruled by good governance. Unfortunately, his time was of social and political upheavals in which no one believed in his ideals. Setting words right. Confucius meant two things when he said to set the words right. Firstly, one must use the correct or appropriate word when discussing something. Words are not used to hurt, belittle, or criticize others. Secondly, words have attached expectations about one's behavior. For example, if one speaks about teacher, one expects teaching. When one speaks about parents, one expects parental love and care. If these people do not act according to how they are expected to behave, they d don't deserve to be called by these names. Similarly, government rulers must work in a manner worthy of their title or and positions. For the benefit of other people Confucius emphasized that government exists for the benefit of the people. This means respecting and caring for the people as they ensure their basic needs, safety, and rights. Government leaders must be clear in speaking so that people may, may understand and respond suitably to their particular political and social situation. Otherwise, the government leads to people in confusion and uncertainty. Rulers should have the trust of the common people. 
Law. Confucius said that if only laws and punishments are applied, people will either follow or evade them simply for fear of being caught. But these people will never develop the sense of shame. It is only when people are taught virtue and rituals that they develop a sense of shame. They will behave themselves according to the rules not because of the need to conform, but because they are convinced it is for the common good. Models People need to have a model of who a gentleman is. This will enable them to see the goodness, moral uprightness, virtue, and rituals which are portrayed by such gentlemen. If such gentleman is seen by the people, they will follow and imitate him. People follow other people who have credibility. These models change other people's way of thinking and behavior. Education without discrimination In the Analects, Confucius says, in education there are no different kinds. This means the same that education should be given to all regardless if they are slow learners or sages, or if they are rich or poor. Education is for everyone, and there must be no discrimination. Women. Throughout Chinese history, women have been considered as causes of disasters to government and families. This is the reason why women have no position in either the political or social aspect of the society. However, Confucius made a distinction on the value and role of women. Through women are below the ranks. They too can do their duties. Rituals teach both men and women to behave properly and accordingly. Women provide a harmonious household and deal with domestic and private concerns. There are also rules for the domestic rituals in which women are included. In short, there should be an equality. The gods, spirit of the dead, and the afterlife. Confucius once said, To work hard to ensure rightness among the people, and while respecting the spirits, to keep away from them, this may be called wisdom. Confucius did not speak more of the afterlife of the spirit of the dead, nor of gods. What he considered most essential is how man should work according to moral righteousness. He was well versed in ancestral venerations, but he rarely spoke about the dead. The choice of heaven or the command of heaven and faith. During the time of Confucius, Many believe that there are people chosen or commanded by heaven in order to live up to what it required of them. For Confucius, he never understood well what heaven has commissioned him to do until he was 50. In any case, for Confucius, whatever heaven commissioned a person to do, he or she needs to do that with reverence, with all energy and with utmost rightness. This will ensure that man follows whatever the will of whatever heaven there is. The book of history and the book of poetry state that heaven inspects those below and its standard is rightness. Heaven sends down a long life or not. Thus, it is not heaven that makes people die young. It is people who sever their life or mean. Mean means faith. It has the sense of all the things that could happen to us. Heaven either rewards or punishes a person based on his or her ethical behavior. The Way Confucius used the term the way or Tao, which is an ethical, political, and civilized order. He says, I set my heart on the way, because myself on virtue lean on humanity. That's all. Thank you. The Cult of Heaven It was a practice under Confucian tradition in the old times 
that the emperor had to go offer sacrifices to heaven and earth. The emperor had to go to the temple of heaven to offer sacrifices to the sac sacrifices to the god named Shangdi, literally means ruler above. The Chinese temple of heaven is located in a wide wide park. It has a circular pier hole with tiles and has three marbled circular open open air terraces. The topmost part of the terrace was where the emperor placed his sacrifices during the during the uh, winter solstice around June. Such a offering of sac of sacrifices in the temple was only to be performed by the emperor who was considered as the son of heaven. Anyone who would attempt to perform it it other than the emperor emperor would be guilty of high treason. This shows that during the Ming dynasty when this when when this cult of heaven became part of Chinese tradition tradition there was there was no separation between the political the, the political and religious power for both are possessed by the emperor the rituals and rites that accompanied, accompanied the worship contained contained con, contained el elaborate and and grand preparations the main the main the grand pre preparation on the part of emperor the emperor was expected to the the emperor was ex expected to take a three day fast a beagle before the main event take takes place his assistants, officials, and and uh, accompany him him in such observance. One day, one the day of offering sacrifices, the emperor had to offer a clean anim animal, usually a bullock of one color without bl blemish, accompanied by invocations, oblation, and solemn music. The emperor, the, the emperor gave gave his offering to the god Shangdi with a prayer of thanksgiving. The worship service in primarily 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 to show to the god in heaven and the great dynastic ancestors how thankful the emperor and his people are for the blessing bestowed on them during the year. The Family Rituals Confucianism believes that the family is crucial in forming a good, pious, and virtuous person. Among the five hierarchical human relationships in Confucian teachings, three of them are within the family. Father-son, husband-wife, sibling and sibling relationships. Each member has the rule and obligation to perform. For instance, the child has duties toward his or her parents and siblings. Likewise, the parents are responsible for their children. However, relationship nurtures essential virtues and qualities necessary for the son to fulfill his duty and responsibility not only within, within the family but also in society in general. The Chinese tradition inspired by Confucian teachings, emphasizes the duty of the son towards his parents. The child has to obey, respect, and honor their parents or father even after, de even after their death. Confucian teachings give value to the family order. Age is a way of telling the social rules has to fulfill such that the eldest has more responsibility and duties toward younger siblings while the younger among siblings is expected to be sub sub 
very bent to the elder ones. The Book of Rites recorded the rituals that surround the family such as marriage, mourning, and funerary rites. Other than these, family rituals also include copying of the male adolescent. The ceremony symbolizes that the child is already recognized as capable of making wise and mature decisions. Marriage comes after the families of both parties gather together to formally announce the marriage and deliberate plans for the wedding. Prior to the gathering, the couple should first present themselves and announce the event before their ancestors in the temple. To quote from the Book of Rites, the respect, the caution, the importance, the attention to secure correctness in all the details, and then mutual affection, these were the great points in the ceremony and served to establish the distinction to be observed between husband and wife. From that righteousness came the affection between father and son, and from that affection, the rectitude between ruler and minister, whence it is said, the ceremony of marriage is the root of the other ceremonial observances. Family rituals are vital to an ancestral cult. The living family members are responsible to pay respect and honor to their ancestors by reporting important decisions and asking permission for their blessings or marriage, for instance. As can be seen, filial pity is given high value in these rituals. Any virtuous, good, respectful, and responsible child or son is honed and nurtured in the family. As has been repeatedly said, Confucius emphasized that a family is very special or very crucial in the formation of the society. The rulers, more than their training and education from outside of their homes, must be first trained, trained and instructed and strictly disciplined by the parents at home. Parents have the responsibility and obligation to cultivate in their children at a young age the necessary inner qualities and virtues of society. World issue. A wife is expected to submit herself to her husband in childhood. A young girl is, is bound by duty to or by her father when she marries she enter into the family of her husband. She is accepted to by and service by her husband. In, sh in his parent, it was only when her own son get married that she would have person over someone else, her daughter-in-law. It is not evident that Confucian wanted education to be expanded. The woman Confucian really had anything to say about women and analytic the only time and he said things about women was who said it is always difficult to deal with women and if you are too close then they are become solitary if you are keep them the too great at that's right guided by computing teaching the period of mourning lasts up to three years the first two years are offered offered for good Fortune while well, the last years for the for please please the Marines are required to wear proper or prescribed clothing without the years until the period of the morning has ended. When someone in the family dies, the first things confusion do is the place rise of the mount of the disease. The body of the dead will was wash cleaning the dress before the lying Lying the body in the comfit banner will be placed in front of the house. The form of announcing the death of a loved one of the friend related the neighbor, those who or can bring the present which at scandal in sent money. Let's talk about the Confucian classics. 
The five Confucian classics, referred as China's oldest literature, are vast collection of stories and precepts. Many people see the books as models of behavior and truth. So the first book is Shi Qing, or known as the Book of Poetry. It contains the oldest 300 poems to be chanted or sung. They are about the common experiences of all people with spoke about love, work, and vice. So the next book is called Shu Jing, or the Book of History. It contains documents about the mythology and history of China from the time of the legendary emperors to Confucius' time. So this book is sometimes called the Book of Documents, which included decrees, speeches, and advice from counselors and similar reports on government affairs. So the third book is called Chun Qi, or Spring and Autumn Annals. It contains the history of Confucius' home state during the years 722 before Common Era to 481 before Common Era, two years before Confucius' death. So the fourth book is called Yi Jing, or Book of Changes. This is a divination manual. The Yi Jing is a book of divination that helps predict future events and understand human existence and natural occurrences. The book consists of 64 hexagrams, which each being a combination of six broken or unbroken lines, with accompanying interpretations. So it's like fortune telling. So the last one is Li Ji, or the Book of Rites. This consists of three separate ritual texts and concerns the Zhu Dynasty's bureaucratic system and the proper forms for many ceremonies. Now, let's proceed to the four books. The four books serve as scriptural basis of teaching Confucianism. These are the Great Learning and the Doctrine of the Mean. Let's talk about the first book, which is the Analex. In its present form, was arranged by the disciples of Confucius. So this book contains 497 verses which feature comments of Confucius on specific problems or situation and then suggestions of appropriate reaction. The book serves as a guide to life for many people throughout the 2,500 years of its existence. Significantly, the book takes on greater significance as one grows older and experiences life. The next book is called Mengzi. It reflects Confucianism facing many intellectual challenges during the time of Manchus. He gave his own views on the significance and meaning of some of the sayings of Confucius. The third book is The Great Learning is a guide on how to become a true Confucian gentleman in which the theme is self-cultivation. The last one is The Doctrine of Me. This consists of series of essays and stories pertaining to the character for normality and centrality and conveys the Confucian ideas of moder moderation, balance, and harmony. So now, let's talk about Sun Tzu's view of human nature. So, according to Sun Tzu, human nature is characterized by selfishness or evil. By evil, Sun Tzu means something that evokes a feeling of revulsion. Thus, human nature as evil means a person is incapable of living in a more cultured and civilized way with his or her fellow human beings. So, human beings are less capable of creating peace harmony, and order because human nature includes desires and emotions that cannot be easily controlled. So he said that dark emotions and desires such as hatred, crime, selfishness, jealousy, disloyalty, violence, and greed are formed through the senses and when human beings act on these desires and emotions, they will find themselves committing evil. He also said that human beings naturally tend to love the self first, prioritizing 
their self-interest as well as envy and hate others. Following this tendency will lead to chaos and evil acts. It is unnatural that self-love is the beginning of learning to love others. Before one can love another, one has to love oneself first. If one loves the self, he or she can know how to love others. For example, like if you love yourself, you'll able to be love others too. So Sun Zi is trying to affirm the power of emotions and desires than the power of the mind to control and manipulate. However, allowing one's emotions and desires to take control of one's action will have devastating effects on others. So to avoid destructive actions caused by spontaneous interplay of emotions and desires, one has to exert a conscious effort to control and regulate them. This conscious exertion, as Sunzi calls it, is the function of the mind. When the mind takes control of the emotions and desires, it creates artificial To avoid destructive actions caused by spontaneous interplay of emotions and desires, one has to exert a conscious effort to control and regulate them. So this conscious exertion, as Sunzi calls it, is the function of the mind. So when the mind takes control of the emotions and desires, it creates artificiality. When actions are informed by the mind and the decision to do a particular act is informed by the same mind, it means that desires and emotions are controlled. This becomes the second nature of human beings and this can be developed through education and training. So by mastering this called conscious exertion, you can control yourself and do and prevent the evil doings you might commit. Also, what Sunzi implies is that moral character or behavior is not natural to human beings. Morality is a product of conscious exertion of something unnatural or artificial to make rules and principles as governing law of human conduct. For him, nurturing and cultivating virtues and moral qualities are artificial, as these build defenses to stop the flow of human nature te natural tendencies. That is, morality or ethical behavior is ar arbitrary, just like traffic lights. The colors correspond to a certain meaning under the traffic law. Laws. However, such meanings are not innate to the colors themselves as they are only assigned by human beings. The meanings are simply agreed upon by members of the community who see the traffic lights as essential in their daily activity. So this kind of analogy explains Sunzi's view of the artificiality of morality. Since human nature is evil and it is tempered by building mechanisms to stop its flow from the human veins, example, building artifices like morality and law, further prevention can be made through educating oneself. For ex so, for example, limiting yourself to an extent to prevent committing evil acts. So, through education, one cultivates and nurtures the self to become a better person. Five hierarchical relationships. Confucianism emphasizes five important relationships parent and child, husband and wife, elder brother and younger brother, friend and friend, and roller and minister. Confucius believes that these five hierarchical relationships must be harmonious to active social harmony. For these relationships to be harmonious, one has to develop the value of righteousness and reign of God to may be interpreted in many ways. Means this is 
being fully human, the means of yelling, the follies of being fully human is which includes ethical property cult cultivation of traditional ritual practices using musical instruments, good miners and ancestors veneration, confused teaching invasion a society that is completely patriarchal, male dominated. It is this vision that motivates the virtue of gentleman being a gentleman request learning of one teacher or master and rigorous study to develop versus necessary in one's conduct one of the central principles of his filial conduct show filial pity is show through obedience and righteousness towards one's parents in doing so one develops bonding and relationships among members of the family so and place mutual obligation between the child and parents are responsible of protecting securing and torturing the child in turn the child has to pay obedience and selfness deserve to parents. Confucianism grounds the base, base of its ethical and moral practices of filial deity of proper practice of Shah's deity of family. In effect, Shah's ethical deity influences the social, economic, and political practices of every individual in a society. The family is a template of understanding the prepare conduct in society most especially in terms of obligation or deity of the ruler confuse side that one shall be turned first in home in the home which necessary virtues such as shall in preparation of father proper prepares or social rules outside of one's home this means that home the home is where all virtues are hardness and hound this also suggests that is the prime obligation of the parents of the to from the teachers or their child children to the child will be prepared to in longer and more complex activity of society. A cultured person of someone many pays with easy carefully. Respect is from both kind heart and is seeking moderation and balance in all his endeavors. Confuse urges his students and followers to cultivate the develop and virtue of respect the respect of others because it is fundamentally broken in putting society into its proper place proper place. Respect for other celebration the interdict function of individuals into a united wall developing deep respect and add for others in place performing ritual practices practices funerals and ancestor veneration cultivating and cultivating and giving respect to others in various expressions such as doing not doing ritual practices during special actions lead to being a gentleman in the confused sense of the term.